Okay, so we thought we had the timing issue figured out. We've been driving it, a couple of good test drives, no issues. Uh, my son and I decided to drive it into town, which is about a 30 minute one way. On the way there, probably 10 minutes into the drive, it uh, starts sputtering, goes into limp mode, we get it out of limp mode, and this is going down the highway. Then uh, check engine light comes on, the EPC light comes on, right when it goes into limp mode. So we get it out of limp mode, start driving it, and it just kind of keeps fluttering and, and running a little rough, like it's missing. Uh, not sure. We get to town, the parking lot, we pull the codes and this is what we have. So we're still getting a camshaft position sensor circuit. Uh, and then this ignition distributor engine speed, implausible. So not sure you know what the deal is with that but we definitely still have an issue so the plan is we're going to order an original volkswagen brand new from the dealer camshaft position sensor and this will allow me to do my own own test see get a baseline and compare it to the other sensors and see if that fixes the issue we've uh but we'll go from there Let's get back to, while we're waiting on that camshaft position sensor, let's get back to finishing up the steering angle sensor and air conditioning issue. Okay, so we are going to verify the steering angle sensor is functioning since that's the error code that we got. So by doing that, we're going to go into the brakes computer. We're gonna do live data. We're gonna do advanced measure value. And then I'm gonna look for steering angle sensor right here. So we have that and then we can hit show. Something that's pretty slick about this, you can either just watch the value here or you could change your gauge. So since it's steering angle sensor. Okay, so I choose this gauge and then I just ran it through the cycle because that way it so when I'm pointed straight ahead on my steering wheel, the needle is straight ahead. So then I'll turn it to the right, nice and, well, it shows to the left, the needle does, but I'm actually turning to the right. And you're just looking for, you're watching the value here and the needle kind of helps you guide it as well. So I'll go all the way till the steering stop which is right there. And you're just looking for a smooth number change. Nothing's jumping around, so I'm turning back towards center. And that's center. And then now we'll turn the other direction all the way to the stop. So all this is doing is showing that the sensor is actually working and reading properly. It's able to go, should get something similar, just a, not a negative number. So all the way, it's right around 520, which is what the other one figured, or wrote, read. Then we'll go back to center. So this is how I can verify that the sensor is actually working. Now you could view it in just a number format, right here. So that right there is straight ahead, turn to the left, it's showing a positive number, should go to the same value, about 520. And then we'll go back the other way, past center, and going hard right, we'll give you a negative 520, approximately. 525, okay, and then back to center, should be zero roughly and that's how uh, 
I verify the sensor is actually working. Okay, so at our successful, two successful test drives, let the wife take it out a second time. No check engine lights, everything's running really smooth. Air conditioning's not working. I think we have a blockage somewhere, so I'll troubleshoot that. And we got the steering angle sensor error. Now I'm thinking that's probably because we replaced the steering, the tie rod ends, inner and outer, and the alignment's off. So going down the road, the steering wheel turns. To go straight down the road, it's uh, turned to the left just a few degrees, not on center. So I'm thinking uh, we just got to do an alignment to it and then do a calibration on the steering angle sensor. So what I'm going to do is just do a quick string alignment on it. Uh, I just got jack stand here, tied to one jack, uh, string tied to it and another one down here. The string's nice and tight and I line it off the rear wheels. So I put equal distance on the back here. And then I go up front and see where I'm missing. And you can tell I'm touching here on the tire, but I got a, a good half inch or more gap on the back. And then you can almost tell just looking down that the wheel is towed out on this side more than the other side. So that kind of explains a lot. This one here, got a, maybe a slight toe out, but we'll see. Yeah, it looks like it, but we'll put a string on this side as well. But first I'm going to do this one and then I'll, I can uh, switch it over to the other side and do that. So I'm gonna pull this tie rod in so you get a little bit more straighter line. My goal right now is to, just to get the steering wheel so it's fairly centered going down the road. And then we'll go down and get the alignment done at a shop. Unfortunately, it's one to two weeks delay to get it in there. So this will get us going for now. Okay, so made some adjustments. Now you can see we're not touching anymore. There's an air gap there, air gap in the front or the rear of the tire. So I'll measure the gap and we're at right at a, an eighth of an inch and i go up here and we measure and you can see that we're less than an eighth so that means we still have a little bit of a toe out and i still went back before i did this and measured the rear make sure it was still square and uh so we still gotta turn in the tie rod a little bit more to get a, either equal or slight toe in. Okay. So I'm pretty comfortable with this one. If we look here in the back of the front tire, we are about a string width away from an eighth. And then we go to the front of the front tire and we're right at an eighth. So basically, we got about the thickness of the string of toe going on this toe in and i'm pretty comfortable with that looks good and this is not scientific this is not foolproof this basically allows me to get it somewhat aligned to close to an alignment so that i can calibrate the steering angle sensor and be able to drive it without doing terrible tire wear or handling issues until I can get it in for the alignment. So I made sure I tightened down my tie rod, lock nut. I'll go move this over to do the driver's side. And I always like, I'm always curious. So I'll set it like this and then uh, I'll take it in and all the tire shops will give you the printout of before they adjusted it and the printout of after. And it just kind of shows you how close you were on your string measurements, so. All right, let's get this moved over. Okay, we are set up on the driver's side. Let's see my string goes all the way down. And I'm actually pretty comfortable with the setting or adjustment it's at already. Again, I'm gonna make sure your steering wheel is straight centered. So if I measure the rear of the rear tire, I'm right at the half inch. 
try to do this while I'm looking, sorry. Right at the half inch mark. Okay, front of the rear tire, right at the half inch mark. Camera won't focus, there we go. Half inch mark there. So that tells me my line's square with the rear tire. Then I come here, take my measurement on the rear of the front tire, and we are a sixteenth shy of half an inch. Okay. I go here, and we are a thirty-second shy. All right, I'm sorry. I'm reading it through the camera is making it difficult. So I'm right at three eighths here on the rear of the front tire, and on the front, I'm a thirty-second in. So a string width in, half of a sixteenth. So I got just a slight toe on the front on this one. So okay, now that we got the alignment done in the shop, the string alignment, we're gonna do a steering angle sensor adjustment or calibration. So we're gonna get here on our screen. Okay, so we're gonna click on brakes. Okay, we're gonna go to guided functions. Then guided functions again. Then steering angle sensor basic setting. And it tells you test prepare program for basic setting was selected, perform the test, yes or no. We're gonna hit yes. Raise vehicle until wheels can be rotated. Turn the switch, do not turn the switch off, the ignition off. So continue. Okay, so this tells us where our position is right now, 1.4 degrees. And it tells us to turn the steering wheel to the left and to the right for a minimum of 15 degrees, then bring it back to a straight position. That's what we're gonna do now. Left, 15 degrees or so, to the right. And then we're gonna come back to center. And then our readings, right? Trying to get it to center. Oop, we're going the wrong way. Okay. Then we hit continue. Form successful. Do not remove the steering wheel. Done. And that's it. So we're done. Continue. End of test. All right. Now she's calibrated. And this is blanking because we're in the brake computer. So if I escape out of this, it should turn off. Stop flashing. There you go. So we got rid of our stability control light. Okay, so we're just doing some diagnosing with the air conditioning. It won't take a charge. It overpressurizes. Which could be a restricted orifice or the pressure switch. Air condition refrigerant pressure switch is not uh, working properly, so it doesn't trigger the pump on or anything else. So as we're trying to see, as you can see, I can log in and take a look at the refrigerant pressure. It's reading all the time, it reads 29.08. Then I unplugged with the engine off, it's still reading the same pressure. I unplug the sensor, it goes to dashes. Since I plugged it back in, you'll see that it goes to like 14 for a second and then pops back up to 29. See, I think you saw it at the beginning. There it is, 14.504. And then it comes back to 29.8. So that makes me think there's something going on with it as well. Now let's start the car. And automatically we should see something different, but it's doing the same thing, just cycling back and forth. All the temperature readings are correct. 
This is the only thing I can see. Engine speed right there, 800, 830 RPM. This doesn't change. So I'm gonna order a new AC pressure switch and see if that fixes our, our air conditioning issue. Or hopefully that's it, because it's only like a 20 or $30 part. So better than having a compressor failure. Keep our fingers crossed. Okay, so we got the air conditioner pressure switch in. So we're gonna try to swap that out. Here's what we have. It's an aftermarket, part number 4016001. Straightforward, there's an electrical plug fits on one end. Thread right in. All right, we'll take it apart and see what we got. Okay, so you gotta pull the wiper blades off and then pull your plastic cover off. And you can see it right in here, inside the firewall. We'll unclip this and then we'll get the wrench. Looks like that one doesn't actually have wrench markings on it. Oh, it's on the bottom, so it's probably a different size. The replacement one actually has the markings or the wrench fittings there and a 15 16 fits it so let me get the right wrench and we'll see if we can take it off all right we got the old one out looks very similar three terminal put the new one in see the threads in there you do not lose the refrigerant when you do this it's got a little like a schrader valve type stem on there that it threads onto okay so i swapped out the pressure switch Turn down the fan a little bit. And we are getting a, a different reading. So we're getting a 43.511 steady. With the ignition off, it was at 29 before I started it. Let's see if she goes down. Okay, let's see, there we go. Look for it, refrigerant pressure. So that's what it, the ignition off, that's what we get. So I think I'm gonna go draw a vacuum down on the system and see if it'll take a charge. Okay, so I got my vacuum pump set up. Looking at drawing a vacuum down. See, it's still pulling it. I'm gonna let this run for a bit. And when she steadies out, make sure she holds, holds the vacuum, and then we'll try to add some refrigerant. Okay, so it's been holding steady here 15 minutes or more here. So I'm gonna go ahead and Remove it and add my refrigerant. Start the engine and see if it'll take a charge. Okay, so now with the vacuum on, I haven't added anything. I did start the car. You can see what the refrigerant pressure is reading now at zero. So I'm gonna go see if I can add some refrigerant. All right, so we replaced the pressure switch and that definitely was an issue because our pressures weren't changing at all. We put the new switch on there. I uh, drew a vacuum and it would go to zero on the pressure switch, but I still couldn't get the, it would take some refrigerant, but it, it still wouldn't blow cold air. So after we inspected it, uh, my son Kean ended up seeing that one of the hoses, actually the hose that we replaced, that we bought on eBay, was pinched, the rubber section was. So after we looked at it, we unbolted it, and one end of it, and it looks like the hose was bent where it bolts to the uh, firewall connection. And what I'm guessing, just the way it was bent and twisted, is they pulled the motor on the vehicle without disconnecting it and pulled, started pulling it out and that bent that hose. So fortunately, with some careful pliers and screwdriver, uh, C-clamp, some plywood, tore pieces of wood, we were able to twist it and straighten it out to where it's routed properly now. And now we have good uh, 
cold air coming out of their air conditioner. So looks like we fixed the air conditioning issue. We got pressures that are changing. We got uh, torque showing up from the motor. Pressure's on. And cold air, that's the best part. So I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching.